Hello, welcome pen friends. Uh, tomorrow is October 1st, 2021. So it's time for Chris's inked pens for October. And I've got nine here. And then I've got the three that are, uh, that I'm finishing the fill from, actually I think this one's been even longer, definitely before September. And then these are two of my September pens that I'm finishing up. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have time in this one video to do a full after action report about how things went in September, but I did want to give you the the new inks and pens that I'm going to be using uh, today, and then we'll just see how how it goes uh, if there's time enough or not. So uh, leftover, or you know, I I just kind of like finishing fills and pens, and even though this is huge, this Opus 88 um, purple, it's almost finished, so I'm finishing that one. And then also I refilled <laughs> the uh, Lamy All-Star Purple that has uh, Sailor Grenade. Um, actually, I have these cards right here. So this pen has Sailor Grenade. It's one of my favorites. The one I just showed you, the purple um, Opus 88, had Monteverde Purple Rain. And then the final pen. So that's only three that carried over, except for the... Twisby Ecos, which are always in my um, bullet journal pouch anyway, so I don't really, uh, those never dry out, so. Okay, this uh, Opus 88 Colero Red still has the Ferris Wheel Press Algonquin Maple, and I'm just loving it. And actually, it's, it's like, it was completely full, and it's here now. So that's how much I've been writing with that. So I decided to put them in the little three-pen koozie and just keep going. And then these are the nine that I selected. Okay, and we'll go over the pens first, then we'll do writing and ink uh, secondly. So this is the uh, Caveco Sport Galen Leather uh, Limited Edition, I guess you call it, or Special Edition, um, with the gold trim. And it's got a 1.1 stub on it. I kind of regret, I wish I had gotten the double broad. I have a double broad nib, but I can't get this off so you know it's just one of those things that I can't seem to pull it out and I'll I'll get there um so this is beautiful I think it's violet but I'll correct that violet purple it I, I'm bad with pen color names you guys that know me know that I but I do pretty good in the description never bypass the description box because that'll help uh, that kind of clarifies things then this is a big excitement for me this month it really is because I've been meaning to do this and I had uh, planned on it and then I just was chicken and this is my Opus 88 Colero uh, demonstrator well I don't even know that they're putting Colero on there they some places they used to but it's definitely not the same as the Colero it's a demonstrator um, it, there was just a little bit of this is a, a true Colero, but when they came out with the demonstrator, this is what we got. So it's cool. Um, what I did was go ahead and from Aziza's um, video on this, I went ahead and put the uh, Pilot Parallel. I made a mess, you can see. There's brown ink all over everything. 3.8 in here. And it was, it would have been foolproof, except that my little, uh, uh, I think they call it O-ring, this thing would not come out. It just would not come out of the Opus 88. And the Pilot Parallel nib has one built on and you can't, if you try to put your uh, Pilot Parallel nib in there with this soft squishy thing in there, it just kind of keeps expelling it. So the only way I could get it out was to use a teeny tiny number eight rounded boil um, crochet hook to just gently pull it out because I just it wouldn't come out the way you know other people had demonstrated that if you just kind of took the pen and did this it would come out but uh anyway I was really happy and I thought maybe somebody else might need that knowledge too that's why my videos are too long <laughs> okay so next up is the Lamy Safari in Terra Terra I think is the color <laughs> again I'm bad with color names oh broad nib of course um, and then next is uh, my Pilot Vanishing Point, or Rhodium and Gunmetal, with a medium nib on it. I love this pen when the ink works out. So, I mean, it doesn't always. 
but I really do love the way it, it works when it gets a good match in it. <clears throat> okay, and then next up is my pink Gen Hao X750 with a, I think it's a broad, unbranded, but Yowo nib. Yeah, okay. One of my very favorites. Okay, and then next is a pen I haven't written with for a while. It's my Twisby Mini AL, one of my, you know, among my first dozen pens. Something looks really funny right there. Oh, no, that's, never mind, that's threading for the cap. I was like, what is that? It felt kind of funny. Um, this also, this has a broad nib unit in it, but I'm happier with my broad nibs on the Twisby Go and the Twisby Swipe, so I don't understand. I really don't. Like, there's just... <laughs> anyway, that's more of a medium in my estimation. I did purchase that nib unit <clears throat> for it, and it just doesn't seem to me any different than the medium one, but it has a B on it, so... Boy, I'm fussy lately, I tell you. Okay, next up is the Diplomat <clears throat> Magnum. And this, I bought it, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had all the windows open, it's raining, my lighting is weird, I'm having to use a little ring light up above to try to balance things, and it's like World War something outside because of that house teardown that's right next to our property. Um, well, there's only one house in between and we're packed in like sardines, so, so who knows about this video, but this is a Diplomat Magnum prismatic purple it's also known as i think john doe or something it depends wh which market you buy it in with a nice uh, broad nib on it that is a little bit soft and so i love it it's you know like not flexible but it's nice and soft and then the next pen is a twisby go with a 1.1 stub on it in smoke and then i just <laughs> i picked this pen when i was um when I was looking at what I wanted to ink up, I noticed this pen in the Twisby uh, case, pen case, and I thought, there's just, it's a crime to have this pen not inked up. <laughs> and then I thought, well, I've, I'm happy with all other eight, so it's just going to be nine then. So um, I didn't actually get a really, f I got a half fill, but I didn't even, sl I just said, okay, that's fine. And it has a broad nib, and it's just, it's the VAC 700R Iris, and was a gift from a pen friend, and I just love it. I, I can't, it is a crime not to have it inked up. So I'm going to go ahead and set up for the writing samples, and we'll just write with each one of these in what uh, what's left of my little currently inked uh, Kikuyo, oh gosh, there's a name for this too. I, I'm not good with names, but I will uh, refresh myself. I found them on jet pens, but this was a goodie in a ink flight. So I'll be right back and we'll write with these pens. <clears throat> okay, number one pen, uh, the Caveco Sport uh, from Galen Leather and a 1.1 stub. I put Noodler's Purple Mountain Majesty's ink in it because I know how this ink behaves. And I felt when I used a different ink that this pen was dry. But now I know that it, I know that the nib is dry because um, this ink is not, it's not dry. It's just, at least not in any of my other pens, so it's okay. It's just something I, I wanted to test and I know now. But it's not like it doesn't put down the ink. It's just uh, way drier than I expected. So, um, can I go sport? I'm just going to put GL for Galen Leather. Um, 1.1, 1 .1. uh, color name, I'm going to leave a line because <laughs> I got to go and check. I, I thought it was violet, but something about that seems to be making me think I might be wrong. <clears throat> Noodlers, Purple Mountain, Majesties. I love this ink, but in a broad nib, it really lays down the ink. And even with the little swatch, you can see, um, so that tells me, that helps me understand uh, the nib that I have on here. And I do want to get that double broad on it, and I will eventually. So I'm not disappointed, though. I wrote a letter this morning, even though today's technically uh, not quite October yet. But 
In fact, I'm so mixed up on my dates. We have today and tomorrow left of September, and I've been a day ahead. If you've gotten a letter from me, it's probably misdated by a day. Anyway, that doesn't matter, though. I like to do these just a little bit ahead because a lot of people or some people like to pull the same inks and, you know, kind of inspires them to pull the ink. Um, and now I forgot what I was going to say. That's terrible. <laughs> Um, no, I'm not disappointed in it. When I wrote to my overseas uh, pen pal this morning, knowing that I really wanted his letter to be with October inks, that's why I cheated. I wouldn't do that otherwise, but it's going to take 11 days to get there, so he might as well be able to see the October inks. It was okay on Tamoy River. It's fine, but it is drier than I would expect with that ink. Okay, then next we're going to have really fun with this because... <laughs> um, and this is that really wide nib, but that's okay. And Diamine Ochre I chose for the Opus 88 Colaro with uh, the, the Pilot Parallel 3.8. And I, I'm not great with this nib yet, so bear with me. Sometimes I can, you know, do pretty well with it. <clears throat> but I just find myself having to fix my writing a lot with it but that's that's just lack of experience with it I, I don't <laughs> I actually did a whole page on his letter so that I could kind of practice and wasn't this bad but I'm trying to make it small so we're gonna just put a K for Colaro and 3.8 it's pretty obvious to me that that's a parallel Nib. Oh my goodness, that's just messy. It just helps if I go ahead and a lot more room for it. <clears throat> Luckily, the ink name is not very big. Oh, and I got to tell you something while I'm doing this. I don't know whether to be worried or, or hopeful. Um, that big outfit that uh, I put in the community tab, a picture of uh, them destroying a house, you know, two down. or There's only one in the middle between me and the, des the destroyed house that they're going to rebuild. Um, those people just came and parked a giant dumpster out front of our house that's like the size of a, a mobile home. And I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if they're going to come knock my house down next. <laughs> I guess they could build me a new one. <clears throat> Ochre. Okay. Because I was talking, nobody will ever be able to read that. But this is really neat because you get all that, the three and a half mil capacity, and you get that... Uh, uh, just it's just wonderful to have that nib in there and it fit right in not nothing leaking or anything it's done really well but like I said don't try to leave the one that's in there in there even if it won't come out because it just then then there'll be some leaking I think um, I knew I had to take it out because she made that pretty clear in her video Aziza did okay and then um, even though that's messy that gives you kind of an idea then the next one is uh the Lamy Safari in Terra, Terra, yeah, I think it's Terra, with um, Diamine Autumn Oak. This is a, a staple. And of course, this is going to brighten everything because I've had to resort to extra lighting. It's almost as if it were evening, but it's not, and it's rained all day. And I, anyway, long story short, I have to do it today if I want to get it done. So, uh, Lamy Safari, broad. Tara. This is really nice. Like, this is really wet. I don't know if that's showing, though. Yeah, it is. I just, my my glasses are glaring from all these lights. Diamine, autumn oak. I'm really going to like this. I don't know why I don't have a 30 mil bottle. This has got to be the third sample I've plotted through. So, um, someone sent me this one, I think. So, um, it's beautiful ink. <clears throat> okay, then next up. I chose an unusual ink for this pen. I didn't go for an ink that I already knew would be okay, but I like Birmingham inks for their flowiness, and I figured that probably this ink would be good in here because that's what this pen likes, or this nib. It likes a juicy, nice and flowy, smooth ink. So, oh, oh, no, okay, good. Didn't ruin that. So let's see what happens. Yeah, that's keeping up really well. I mean, that didn't keep up, but this does. And it's a medium nib. Um, 
probably for me I should have purchased abroad but it's okay probably like you know I could still use it in my bullet journal with some inks so I guess it's okay I almost sold this in the beginning but then I started it started to grow on me when I found inks that I liked for it vanished okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pilot Vanish Ing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to learn to roll with whatever happens without getting so uptight. Okay. And this is Birmingham Antique Sapia. It dries on, so far on everything I've done almost like a gray. And I like it. It's probably the limit of uh, where the ink does okay in it. Like many inks I've tried in this pen, forget it. It was just not a good experience. But then ones like, uh, well, I think like, if I remember right, Sailor Ackaby and... Uh, a couple of, of really like, oh, I know uh, Sailor Grenade also worked really well in this one. It was nice and flowy. So I'm beginning to know what it likes, I guess that's all. Next up is one I just need my head examined. I cannot believe I hadn't tried this ink yet. Um, and my pen friend that sent it to me must must wonder about my self. Anyway, um, I saw this because I was trying to kind of get inks that would play well together or more that wouldn't clash and I thought you know rather than go for a bright magenta why don't I get a pink a soft kind of pink that's not too light this is vintage Schaefer script Persian rose and it's gorgeous I can't believe I haven't written with it before now um thank you thank you pen friend who sent uh well this ink and a different pen friend sent the antique sapia um oh goodness you guys uh it's this is a channel brought to you by you really and y'all know that I just appreciate all of you um, this is the Jin Hao X750 pink with a broad nib this is it's just wow this ink is like amazing it's not only is it beautiful kind of reminds me in a way of um, Monteverde Rose Noir but it's just it's got it all for me so far. It's flowy and everything. Vintage Schaefer. Ah, I misspelled. Script. Persian Rose. I don't. I can't explain what happened. Why I haven't tried it before now? Because I think I did though have it stored with some other that might stain a pen, but that's that's just definitely not the case with this. So it makes for a nice, you know, a nice uh, coordinated pen and ink too. Okay, next up, um, I Miss Copycat here. I actually was watching. Um, Pen friend Marilyn do his video where he opened a, a whole box of um, Lamy Dark Lilac, but I've been blessed by uh, two pen friends with samples of this ink, so um, not one single drop will be wasted. I am enjoying it. So it's got that beautiful um, gold sheen, and I put it in my Twisby Mini knowing that this pen, it always seems a little dry, so even with the broad nib, but I know this ink, I know it well enough to know that it's it's great, so um, I think it's going to be fine, but I feel as if that's writing like a medium. Okay, um, Twisby Mini. I felt like for Halloween I really did want at least one bright or dark purple that was dark enough. I still have the bright uh, Monteverde Purple Rain in here, so I, I had to keep that in mind, what else I was working with. This is the AL with a broad nib. Mommy Dark Lilac. Oh, it's just gorgeous, and I feel so blessed to even be able to try it in my pen lifetime because it's such an elusive ink. Um, trying to make sure you can see anyway this is not a wet writer really um, even with this broad nib 
<clears throat> but that's okay because I have other Twisbees with broad nibs that do put down the ink really good. So one of these days I'll get a nib on it that pleases me, I guess. Okay, then next up is uh, the Diplomat Magnum. Wanting to make sure you somewhere near can see this. With Colorverse number 47, Ham number 65. That's what the the little label from the pen outpost says. And uh, let's see, I think I can post this, yeah. I love this nib. It's um, it's a broad nib that when I look at it, I can see that it's a broad nib. <laughs> like it, I that makes me happy. So, okay. Diplomat Magnum broad nib. I only have one with a broad nib, so I guess let's see. Prismatic purple. <laughs> Colorverse, I'm just going to call it ham. I have Colorverse ham that's glistening, but this is just the regular. <clears throat> that might be what all these numbers are about. I don't know. Not super wet, but definitely it's, uh, it's pretty, and it's got some shading. I noticed that earlier on... Uh, I was writing on uh, uh, Hamlin Optic because that's what my pen friend and I write back and forth on when we have it. So, um kind of kind of nice okay next up is a uh, diamine pumpkin a nice bright orange and I remembered that I love the shading on this one um, and I have a like a third of a little 30 mil bottle to finish so I thought why not put it in a stub and see what see how I like it oh uh, Twisby go and smoke with a 1.1 stub Okay. See, I just like a fire hose. I don't. That's a theme, though. Me and stub nibs. They have to be really rounded and really gushy, I guess. Okay. And I love them, but they have to be, the ink has to want to do this stuff, too. So, Okay, Twisby. For the writing, it's fine, but when I start scribbling. Twisby go. Smoke. 1.1 Diamond Pumpkin. This is pretty. <clears throat> we can do obnoxious orange during Halloween and get away with it, I guess. <laughs> Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, it's 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 quite it's still gonna be drying for a while there. It's nice. Okay, then last but not least, the Twisby uh, Vac 700 r iris with a broad nib and by the way this twisby broad nib is a broad nib it's very broad with a twisby emerald green um it is such a nice white wet writer with the combination of this ink and this nib that it almost would bleed through the hamlin optic so that's something to consider i guess but it did okay on tomoy river paper so there's just there's just no hesitation. That is super. Okay, so oh, they've come back with their heavy machinery again. Twisby, I hope you're not hearing that. <clears throat> Vac 700R. <laughs> I I had the windows open and I thought what I should yell out the window was, "Hey Earl, you got anything you need to throw away?" <laughs> and then they'd go away. They'd park somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean, though. They have to park somewhere, and everybody else parks all their cars all over the street. Nobody parks in their driveway but us, so if there's ever a big truck or anything, it's going to be in, our, in front of our house. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, you know, I could still get my truck out, so. Emerald green. Maybe I'm a little jealous that they're going to get a brand new house, but other than that. Okay. Let's see, what are we up to, like an hour 50? 24 minutes. Oh, not bad. Okay. All right, so there we have it. All of a sudden, I realize, okay, so there's everything, except that i got to make it a little bit. So I left room for my um, midterm grades and everything. And we've got nine, and then we've, of course, got the three to finish. And it just doesn't look like a hardship at all, because when you really look at it, um, 
Let's see, those three additional colors. I don't know if I have them here. I guess I don't. I wanted to get those. Okay, so that this is all I wanted to show was these are the three I'm using up, uh, kind of two red ones. Um, this one is a little bit complex when it comes out of the nib, and so is this one, but uh, this one kind of begins to show some orange or yellow highlights for some reason. And then the traditional purple. So I'm using these, and then these are, this is the new color palette. And I'm really pleased with this because I don't, not that I think they all go together, but I can see that when I'm, good Lord, I guess they brought another one. Um, when I'm writing, there's several of these colors that are going to play well together. Um, even if it's on the same page. Normally, it'll, for me, I'll do an A5 one side with and stick with one ink and then turn it over and use, you know, a different color. But I think these will play well together, even if I want to paint borders or do something like that. So I'm really excited this time. I don't think I was as, as excited about the September inks and pens. Um, I probably had just an average amount of interest and, <laughs> you know, I wasn't maybe quite as um, looking forward to it. But the weather's gotten cooler and uh, stuff like that. And, and also um, just, I feel like these are going to be just right. So uh, I am definitely going to have to come back with an after action report or, or else try to do that in a different way. You know, lately I've been almost craving that I wish I had a blog instead of just everything being video. Even though I like video a lot, but I mean, I could probably do something um, over on Instagram, but we'll see. I, I won't make a promise right now that it'll be a video, but there were a few points I wanted to make about uh, how it went last month. Um, let's see. I really can't go over 30 minutes, but I, I see I have a couple minutes. Let's flip back, and it's possible that, wow, I tell you, those people. <laughs> I wonder how I'm going to do through this entire house rebuilding. If they're going to be out front every day, I don't know. Okay. Um, oh, yes, the, the Robert Oster Bishop to King. Definitely, every single time I would write with it, it would turn, but see down here... It turned a lot more purple, uh, deeper purple. So it's it's a really interesting ink, but it goes down blue every time, and it, and then it changes. But it takes so long to change um, that it fools me. That's all. I mean, that's all that that was about. And so I did give it a, a B minus, probably just due to the color, and maybe it was a little bit dry. But everything else did pretty good, except for. Um, a Blackstone Barrier Purple in that Twisby Eco Medium, it surprised me. It seemed dry, but it could be the nib. That's a brand new pen. But see, I'm just not, I'm just writing all the time. I'm not really wanting to fix pens all the time. So anyway, and that's not really, even if that has to be smooth, that's not a big, big problem. Um, I was going to say I'd do it on a rainy day, but this is a rainy day and I've been quite busy, so... But I mean, my very, 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 very favorite <clears throat> was this one. The Lamy All-Star um, with the 1.1 nib and Sailor Grenade. It just surprised me because stub nibs never turn out to be my per my favorite. It's always a broad nib. And then it was, uh, you know, that's interesting. I gave the Opus 88 Colero uh, with the Ferris Wheel Press Algonquin Maple an A++. And I gave the Lamy All-Star Sailor Grenade uh, an A+, but I really, I can't get over how that looks. That ink just looks so beautiful. I think in terms of ink, it would be this grenade, um, or Sailor Grenade, or Grenade. And then in terms of the whole experience, the pen, the nib, the capacity, everything, and the, the flowiness of the ink, yeah. Probably what needs to be done is this ended up getting a, a double plus too. So it's very near a tie. <clears throat> but in terms of pens, it would be this one I would pick because you can change out that nib um, unit super easy. You can on this too. But there's just something about having that, that amazing eyedropper capacity. And all you have to do is remember to open your... Um, uh, <clears throat> A valve, your 
shut off valve when you're going to write and you're good to go um, for a long, long time. And I had to refill the uh, All Star, which is not, that's not a crime either, but <clears throat> excuse me. But anyway, great pens. And of course, um, this has taken a lot longer to use. I think uh, this is the Opus 88. I mean, yeah, Opus 88. Omar, let's see when we started with that one. And then that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, it's been a long time. Oh, my. Okay, that's been since June? July, August, September. Three full months. June, July, August. No, four, four months. Well, no wonder I'm almost done uh, writing with it. <laughs> Three and a half mils. Okay. Okay, so that's amazing. No skipping, no problems. I'm, now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to attribute that not only to the pen, but to the Monteverde ink that's in it. Monteverde ink is wonderful for flow and for pen performance especially. So, Okay, and color and everything else. <clears throat> okay, I guess I got a little bit excited today, but hopefully you will too. And uh, let's see, we are... <laughs> We are here, October 2021. So let's see how this goes, and I'll let you know. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. And thank you for all you folks who have contributed. I remember um, my pen friend from New York sent me the initial sample of this Purple Mountain Majesties, and then I bought the, the bottle. I believe somebody bought the uh, ochre and sent it to me, too. Yes, they did. Um, and somewhere I've got those initials on each individual um coloring thing but that's that's been like one of those things that wow if i slow down i <laughs> i don't get things done um diamine autumn oak i've had um i've bought a sample and had two people send me samples and then this was i think pen friend casey sent the birmingham antique sapia if i'm not mistaken and pen friend uh, frederick sent a sample of the persian rose so gorgeous and then both the pen friend karen and matt sent me samples of lamy dark lilac i mean i'm so spoiled um colorverse ham i purchased oh boy i purchased a sample uh diamine pumpkin i don't even remember i believe i purchased that 30 mil bottle but i think someone has probably sent a sample too and then this one i purchased in the sixth set the twisby set the twisby emerald green Okay, I really do need to go because I might not um, have enough uh, bandwidth to do this if I don't stop now. <laughs> See you next time. Bye for now.